Hello and welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine with Pick and Pay. Another week in lockdown, another week in my cellar. There are worse places to be. A week when I'm sure for many of you, it's starting to just fray on the nerves a little. When can I get my hands on some more wine? It's been a really difficult lockdown for everybody in the wine industry, particularly our wine exporters. And we're hoping that that is all about to change. But if we can't be drinking wine, we might as well be learning about it. Now, perhaps you do still have a little wine and maybe, just maybe, in your cellar, you've got a bottle of an Italian varietal, in which case, grab it, open it up, because I've got somebody on the show today who can share some expertise on Italian wine. Now, he's sort of Italian. In fact, when he drops into Italian, you'd never know that he actually comes from New Zealand, the country that first put him on the map as an international rugby star. But while Sir John Kerwin is extremely well known for terrorizing opposition defenses down the wing, and also increasingly well known as the face of mental health in New Zealand, I think his greatest triumph by some distance is bringing fabulous Italian wine to the world, and especially New Zealand. So let's cross over to his palatial home in Auckland, where he's got some wine waiting for us. Uh, hello, Sir John Cohen. Cheers, Dan. There we are, mate. <laughs> always, always nice to have a glass with you. I know you're not scared of a glass. <laughs> well, we've had one or two in the past, especially uh, in times uh, with our, our mutual friends at DHL traveling through the Rugby World Cup last year and the, the journey of our good friends, uh, Ron Rutland and James Owens. Uh, and journeying is a great, great, great metaphor for your life because you've had a more extraordinary journey than most. We know you as a, a rugby great. We know you now as such a, a, an extraordinary advocate for mental health and mental illness and understanding that space. But what particularly South Africans might not know quite so well is just how passionate you are about wine. How did that story start? How did John Kerwin become this wine aficionado, uh, particularly of the Italian variety? Well, Dan, I was brought up in a pretty humble part of New Zealand, especially Auckland, South Auckland. My dad was a butcher. Mum was a housewife. So, you know, I'd come home every night and we'd have meat and three veggies. So either pork, uh, lamb or beef and then with three veggies and my dad would come home from work, worked hard um, and he'd have a, a beer or he'd have a whiskey on the rocks. My mum would have a wine out of a cask. So for me, that was my education in wine. And then, you know, rugby has given me so much, Dan, so much in my life. And I got offered to go to Italy in 1985 so i go to italy and i fly to italy and i land and first thing i saw was amazing looking ladies and i thought wow this is this is amazing and then the first night we had dinner we had six courses and every course we had a different wine and i thought oh this is really nice of them this is really nice of them this is amazing they must be looking after me because I'm here for the first time. But the reality was that's how they lived every night. So I didn't realize that you could have like, for example, in New Zealand, they said, oh, you can't have white and then a red. That's not true. So we would have the first course, a wine, the second course, a wine, the third course, a wine, the fourth course, another wine, then the fifth course, a grappa or something like that. And I, I thought I died and gone to heaven. And so really my passion for wine was born out of food, company. So for example, in New Zealand, if someone comes around to your house, they'll normally bring, or you know, they'll bring some, some, some wine or they'll bring some food. But in Italy, if someone brings a bottle of wine to your house, they have a story behind it. And that story is, I met this guy, I got this wine off, I've tried this. I had this with steak. What are we having for dinner? So there was this whole amazing journey just about why you should drink wine and why you should match it with food. And I just fell in love. I just fell in love with that culture because as rugby people, we're very social. As rugby people, we love company. We love a good yarn. We love a good story. I mean, you, you're, you're an expert at that, you know, but this was actually five or six hours at the dinner table but talking about wine as if it was a rugby game and so I just fell in love with it and decided um, when I came back to New Zealand that I would like to try and share some of that passion share some of the passion about wine spending time together 
you know, talking food and wine. And, and for me, one of the greatest nights, and we had a couple during the World Cup in, uh, in Japan with good friends, food and wine. I think it's the most beautiful way to spend an evening. It certainly is, and there's absolutely no disagreement. It's a bit of a step, though, from enjoying wonderful meals with terrific Italian wine and absorbing that culture to actually making it part of what you do. And that is part of what you do now, and a very big part, because you've got this JK Wine Company. Explain what it is, how it operates, and, and how that came about. Yeah, so uh, when I came back to New Zealand, what I noticed was that in all the supermarkets and all the wine stores, you have a massive array of wines. And what I wanted to be able to do was personally select wine for people. So when they see JK14 wines, they know they've personally selected it and it's value for money. I don't know what the prices are like in South Africa, but in Italy, you can buy an amazing wine for like $3. But if you come to New Zealand, it sort of goes from $14 to $150 and you don't really know. And I'm not a wine expert, Dan, you know, I'm not like you. I'm, I'm just a peasant when it comes to wine. Um, but what I wanted to do was choose a wine in that sector that was value for money. Because what I noticed in Italy was that people don't want to pay too much, but they don't mind paying the right amount. So JK 14 wines was born for two reasons. My daughter, um, came back to live in New Zealand. She's a professional volleyball player, but there's no money in volleyball for, for you know, women's volleyball here. So I said, why don't we put our two passions together and we will create a, a label. And what I do also, Dan, which you will love, is I go to all my rugby mates that have vineyards and I choose the wine. And I choose the wine. I relabel it JK14 and... What you will be guaranteed is that I've chosen it personally and it's good value for money. And not everyone likes wine. Like, you know, I love the wine industry because everyone's so um, together. You know, everyone loves each other's wine. And I think it's a beautiful industry to be in. It probably works as well in New Zealand that you are introducing grapes that most New Zealanders won't see a huge amount of, certainly not grapes that are traditionally grown in New Zealand. And you've got a couple of examples of that. I know you've got wine wine in particular open, and I think we're both long overdue uh, a glass of wine together. Uh, so uh, if you'd like to pour a glass of what you have, I'll pour what I've got, uh, and we can talk through those two wines. So what, what is that, JK? This is a Malanotte. So this is a really interesting wine. I'll just pour myself a little a little glass here. So Malanotte is a really interesting wine. So Malanotte, they firmly believe in uh, in Treviso, in the extended area of Treviso, San Paolo di Piave, that Malanotte was the wine that Jesus had at the Last Supper. They firmly believe that. Hey, and there's no one around to prove us wrong, right? <laughs> so I don't think there's anyone around. But Malanotti is only made by two vineyards in our region. It's a Roboso grape, which is a, which is a great, if you had a Roboso wine when you come to Italy, it's sort of the wine only your grandfather drinks. You know, like you drink, you think, ooh. But actually what they do with the Roboso grape is they um, render it down in the ceiling so it becomes like a raisin, and they say ripasito, and then they put it back into the Roboso grape, put it in an oak cask, in an oak barrel for a year, and then they bottle it for a year. So Malanotte is a very difficult wine to uh, find, but it is what I would say, because it, it, where we come from in, uh, in, in, uh, in Veneto region, it's by the Piave River. So the wines have to work really, really hard. The roots have to go quite deep to get the nutrients. So it's, uh, it's really a strong earthy taste, wild berries, and then you get that raisiny finish at the end. So I wanted to bring, and really for the Veneto region, we are peasants, we're poor, we're farming. Um, and, you know, post-war we became, um, you know, clothing. But at the end of the day, really we have a farmer mentality. So the most important thing is that We've never really had wines that have competed with the big wines like an Amarone or a Barolo, you know. So we haven't had big wines. So this is the first chance for Veneto to say, actually, we've got a big wine. 
And, uh, you know, I, I, I personally love this wine. It's just a beautiful wine to drink. Great with a steak. Great with a braai, as you guys would say. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's a unique wine, and that's what I like about it. What are you drinking? So I'm going to introduce you to some wine from a good friend of mine. This is one of uh, one of your Hunter Rupert's wines. This is the uh, Terra del Capo and his Sangiovese. Uh, the uh, the Francho area. I'm not sure if you've ever been down to Francho on your visits to South Africa. Uh, it's got a, a great history. It's where the first French uh, Huguenot Dutch Huguenot settlers came in, and it's a, it's a little slice of heaven. It's charming. It's picturesque. It's got some fabulous restaurants, uh, and they've got a couple of mm, a couple of uh, Italian style grapes. The Sangiovese is one of them. Uh, how how would a Sangiovese, broadly speaking, compare to what you're drinking now in terms of style? Oh, San, San Giovese is a beautiful wine, quite quite different, quite different to what I um, am drinking at the moment. And you notice the glass I'm drinking it in? Yeah, it almost looks like you've got a, a rum and coke rather than a glass of wine. Yeah, exactly. Because um, where I come from in Italy, they don't drink um, wine out of wine glasses. They just drink it out of normal glasses because it's about, uh, you know, they were poor. Why would, you know, you just drink out of what you've got. Um, but I think Sangiovese is a beautiful wine. I love Sangiovese. I think um, a Sangiovese, you, would, you can drink every day. I love Sangiovese because if, if I was here tonight, just open it. I think with Malinotti, it's a, bit, it's a bit bigger. You need to think just a little bit more about what you're having for dinner. Um, you know, the reason why I love Sangiovese is because you can open it every night. I wouldn't open this every night. I'd probably open it once a week um, just because it's a little bit bigger a little bit rounder. I mean, Sangiovese, I think, is one of the greatest wines you can open every night, as you do, obviously. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of two particular dishes from my time in New Zealand. I had a, a fabulous rolled shoulder of lamb at the Duke of Marlborough Hotel in Russell, which was glorious. Uh, and then I also had, uh, it was also a big lamb dish down at the Botswana Butchery in Queenstown. Yeah. Um, two big, rich slathers of meat, and it sounds like that could be just the wine to do them justice. Yeah, well, listen, Dan, I'll, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little recipe to do. So you can see my uh, pizza oven burning. Uh, we're doing pizza tonight, but tomorrow morning I will have a leg of lamb, and I'll put it in as the heat comes down. So one thing, one recipe that I learned in Italy was rosemary, garlic, anchovies 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 and a little bit of prosecco so what you do is you mix that all together you open the lamb a wee bit stuff a little bit in and then you rub the outside of the lamb with balsamic vinegar and put it in the oven beautiful oh. and you can have it with the sangiovese you can have it with a malanotte but it needs to be a red that's relatively important because the tastes are amazing Oh, that sounds great. I'm married into a Greek family, so a leg of lamb is a regular occurrence, although ours is normally the, the oregano lemon juice slow cooked for six hours fall off the bone, but yours does Beautiful. sound particularly Moorish. I think that Sangiovese could give it a, a decent crack as well. Yeah, do the, do the same. I think um, do the same six-hour treatment, and I've done a couple of Greek lambs, and they're beautiful. Do this as a bit of a change. And what I do is I don't tell anyone that I'm putting anchovies in it because people go, no, oh, anchovies. But actually anchovies accentuates the taste of the lamb. I will give it a crack. I'm looking forward to that. I, I also love, especially when you've got a, something like a leg of lamb that's big and it lasts a while over lunch, to play around with a couple of different bottles, a little couple of different tastes. And I've got another Italian wine here. It's slightly older and I'd like to run it by you just to, to see uh, what, I, uh, what I should be looking for in it. Uh, you'll remember Big Skulk Burger, um, a man whose uh, sizable fists found the other end of opponents at the bottom of many a ruck. Uh, he's now got his uh, Skulk Burger and Sons of Elberduck farm. Uh, this is another farm. It's just up the road from Skulk. It's called Bossman Family Vineyard. This is about the seventh generation of Bossmans. Uh, and here you have got a Nero Davola. Nero Diavola. Nero di Avola, the Sud Boro di Italia, Sud di Italia, Nero di Avola. So tell me what you're tasting. I would say you are tasting, if it's a good Nero di Avola, you'd be tasting some pretty deep fruits. Tell me what you're tasting. 
I think, as I tasted, I think this is the only one we do in South Africa. I haven't seen another one. Mm. Uh, so this is this is 2014. So it's got six years on it. In Baricato, is it in Baricato? Has it been mm. in oak? Hmm. It's um. Mm. It's quite dry. This. Yeah. Nero really? Diabola, Nero Diabola should be quite dry in your aftertaste. Mm. There is so some nice, a... some nice fruit. It is dark fruit, but it's not. It's quite understated. It's not overpowering. It's quite a delicate wine. Nice, elegant uh, feel to it. Very, very dry at the end. It just vanishes at the end. Yeah, and I think that, like, when you think about a Nero Diabola, a good Nero Diabola, when you think about the big fruit tasting, and then it sort of finishes, boom. What would you eat it with? Hmm. You know what? I, I think this could work quite nicely with a piece of seared tuna. That's a big call, though, Dan. Big call having a Nero Diabola with tuna. That's a big call. I like it, though, because mm -hmm. I was going to say that the last time I had a Nero Diabola, you wouldn't believe what I had it with. I had it with little bits of bread with butter and anchovies on top <laughs> unbelievable like when when i got served it, i thought oh, this ain't gonna work brother this is not gonna work but it was amazing so you had the bread the butter and then the anchovies which has got a boom and then nero the arbiter but what happens was the nero the arbiter sort of cleaned it so it was like i had about five or six of them but what happened was like starting again every time because that taste that you've got of the nero in your in your in your mouth right now it's sort of clean and so every time you you ate had a drink it was like starting again brilliant love it loved it loved it so, it, so it's anchovies and bread and butter here it's anchovies and the leg of lamb next week on dan really likes wine so john cohen introduces us to anchovy ice cream <laughs> but dan i tell you something about anchovies so when you say anchovy to people you will get a reaction Definitely. But yesterday, I cooked a pasta, and often when I use anchovies, I just don't tell anyone. So yesterday, I cooked a pasta, a little bit of oil. I melted the anchovies so they sort of, you know, they break up, and then I put broccoli in it. Just threw some broccoli, well cooked broccoli, well steamed, and it all breaks up. A little bit of chili, boom, in a pasta, and people are going, "Wow, what's that? What's that tangy taste? What's it?" But just don't tell them. Just don't tell them that it's anchovies. Anchovies has been beaten up as a fish all its life. It's wrong. It's like the, the anchovies are a little bit like front rowers. We don't really like them, but we like them. And then we don't know how we should take them and stuff. So <laughs> It's almost, almost a bit like Merlot in South Africa. Give somebody a really good Merlot and they'll love it. Tell them it's a Merlot and they'll say, oh, I don't really drink Merlot. Have you got something else? <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, before we let you go, JK, the two things I need to do. The first one is find out about this wine. If living in South Africa, I feel the need to try some Kiwi orchestrated Italian magic. Can I get hold of it? Is it available? Well, I'll probably have to send it to you, Dan. So if people want to reach out and buy it, I'll send it to you. How's that? All right. Well, maybe we've uh, we've got very good friends at DHL. Maybe they can uh, help us to uh, to get hold of it. Good uh, good people at Team DHL. Hello, Fiona and Megan and Henny, if you're watching. Uh, and then the question of South Africa. And I know uh, we've discussed this on the Dan Nichols show before, but it's particularly relevant here. Uh, and I've had through the course of this recording, uh, 17 messages from my surf mad director, Stefanus, who's got posters of John Cohen and Kelly Slater in equal measure up on his bedroom wall, uh, much to his wife's dismay. Uh, and that is the trip to South Africa. And it's uh, an open invitation. You get out of here, you just have to get here. We'll take you around, we'll taste some great wine, and then I'll hand you over to Stefanus to get out on the waves. Oh, listen, Dan, when you told me about this, that you have winemakers that surf, and they have a weekend where you do wine and surf. Like, I'm a shit surfer, don't get me wrong. I can't surf, but it's for my soul, and I love it. If I could come to South Africa, a place that I love, and the people that I love, and do wine and surf, man, I will never go home. That is beautiful. Please invite me, Dan, please. I'll bring my wine. I'll bring as much wine as you need. 
consider yourself invited. In fact, Stefano Sarabi, director extraordinaire, is actually the reigning champion at the Vintners Surf Cup. He won the last edition. He's a fine surfer in and amongst being a fine filmmaker. Well, I'm in his team. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, JK, it's always an absolute delight catching up with you, even if it is in a virtual medium rather than personally. Uh, I still need to, to get hold of some of that wine. It's a really fun project, and I think what makes it stand out because you've you've taken wine to a country that makes plenty of wine which you, you needed something to differentiate yourself and the fact that you've got that history you're selecting that wine yourself and you're giving a, a wine market that doesn't have those italian grapes naturally the chance to access them uh, i think uh, speaks to the success that you've had so now we just need to, to get a few cases over to south africa exactly i'd love to do that dan and please um to all your listeners please stay safe I know that it's a, a very difficult time for us all. And, um, you know, it's about your goodie basket. So I say to people, how do you look after yourself every day? And sometimes my goodie basket is having a really nice bottle of wine at the end of the day and sharing it with the people that I love. So, you know, to all my South African friends, please, please look after yourself. Um, understand that it's an emotional time. Make peace with your emotions and celebrate as much as you can during this difficult time. Wise words from a man who's been sending them out around New Zealand through his extraordinary mental health app that's having such a big impact on New Zealand. Hopefully we'll see it in South Africa at some point. Hopefully we'll see JK out here as well with some of that wine. It's We really, really, really are crossing fingers not too long until we can all be buying wine again, sharing it and enjoying it with friends and family. When that happens and you're not too keen on getting out too much, remember that the Pick and Pay online store does have a cracking selection and a lovely way to restock that seller. Keep watching out for our weekly episodes. Remember, Tuesdays and Thursdays, live wine tasting on our Facebook Live page at 5 o'clock. That's Tuesdays and Thursdays every week. And also, the Selmelia series with Niederberg still coming out as well. Some terrific, terrific stories. A big thank you to Sir John Kerwin, wine producer extraordinaire, and also played a little rugby in his time. Stay safe, enjoy your wine. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Thank you.